How's it going tonight? All right. How many of you are excited to be in church tonight on a Wednesday night? God is good. God is good. All right. So I want to read a scripture, 2 Peter chapter 1, in the Passion. It says, it's in verse 3. It says, everything we, everything we could ever need for life and godliness has already been deposited in us by his divine power. For all this was lavished upon us through the richest, rich experience of knowing who has called us by, by name and has invited us to come, through, to come to him through glorious manifestation of his goodness. It's hard to read that way, but you get the picture. Everything we ever need for, for life and godliness have been given to us, and it's found in Jesus. Everything's found in Jesus. And so I just want us to take a moment and pause. And I think sometimes we can have so many things that are going on in our minds and in our day and our week and this month that uh, let's, let's just pause and reflect and acknowledge that everything we need, it's found in Jesus, in his presence. In his presence, there's fullness of joy. He brings peace. He is life. And so let's take a moment and let's invite him in this place. The Lord is here. But let's, for our sake, let's invite him in. So Lord, tonight, God, we, we welcome you here, Holy Spirit. We give you the praise. We give you the glory that you deserve. You are worthy. You are worthy, King Jesus. We ask that you would be glorified here tonight, that you would receive our praise, that you would receive our worship tonight. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, everyone said amen. All right, let's go tonight and worship.
Come into 
Scripture says to fix our eyes on Jesus. He's the author and finisher of our faith. Not to the left or the right. Fix your eyes on Jesus. Fix your eyes on Jesus.
just want you more than anything you can give us. We just want you more than any blessing. We just want you. Nothing else matters, just you, just you. Come on, sing it with me. This world could never satisfy the longing in my soul. When all is lost and hope is dry, when all I feel is cold, I'm coming back. To your presence I'm coming back To your presence Cause there's a hunger
it up to him. your Holy Spirit would move tonight, God. Lord, that you would minister through the speaker, God. Lord, that we would hear your voice, God, and not his, Father. Lord, we pray right now, God, that all the focus, God, every eye and ear, Lord, will be on you today, Jesus. Father, because we're here for you, Jesus. Lord, we need you, God. You're all we need. And Father, we thank you, Lord, for what you're doing tonight, God. We thank you for meeting us here already. We thank you for what you're going to do in advance. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Welcome to Praise Chapel Paramount. Greet your neighbor.
welcome to Praise Chapel Paramount. Our Sunday morning service will continue in person at 9 and 11 a.m. Our Wednesday midweek service is at 7.30 p.m. We will be streaming morning prayer on Tuesdays at 7.30 a.m. online and Saturdays at 8 a.m. online or in person. We will not be providing childcare at this time for our in-person services. On Friday nights, we have a place for everyone. For ages 12 through 18, we have Fresh Fire that meets here in this building. Across our community, we have connect groups for all ages. Getting involved in one of these groups is a great way to build strong relationships here in our church. All of these groups start at 7.30 p.m. Please text CONNECT to 62488 to find a group near you. To give and continue to support our church and ministry, you can use the following methods. Go to praisechapelparamount.com slash donate to give online. You can text to give with the amount to 562-206-1519, or you can always drop it off here at our building during our office hours listed on our website. Our online presence is growing, and we're looking for more people to help our live stream media team. If you're interested, please see me or Renee Robles for more information. If you would like to get involved in any of our other ministries, please visit our website at praisechapelparamount.com. If you are joining us for the first time, thank you for being here with us. Please text NEW to 62488. We'd love to connect with you and let you know about what's happening in our church. For up-to-the-minute information, upcoming guest speakers, and other events happening at our church, follow us on Instagram and Facebook at PC Paramount. Please enjoy the rest of our service. Welcome to Praise Chapel, everyone. We're glad you're here tonight. We're gonna have a wonderful time. And uh, we just want to welcome all of you to the house of God. I want you to turn to your neighbor and say you're in the right place at the right time right now. I believe that tonight. We want to welcome all of those that are online right now. We have about 120 people on screen right now, 120 families that are watching on Facebook and YouTube. And so, hey man, let's give them a shout out tonight. Welcome, we're glad. And uh, some that just couldn't be here tonight. And so we just appreciate all of those that are watching, but we appreciate all of you that are here tonight. If you're here for the very first time at Praise Chapel Paramount, we just want to give you a big Paramount welcome tonight. And we want to welcome any visitor uh, tonight, your first time visitor tonight. Just raise your hand. Anybody here for the very first time tonight? We do, oh, right over here, God bless you. Amen. We welcome you to the house of God and anyone online. We appreciate you being with us tonight. And uh, we're looking forward to what the Lord is going to do. Uh, we've got a special guest who'll be on stage in just a few moments. We've got Pastor Ron Simpkins tonight. It's going to be good. I was talking to him earlier there in the office, and he, he's, he's ready. He's ready to preach and minister, so we're just excited. Uh, to have him we call him uncle ron ron and uh, there's something about his stories and uh, the way he brings out the word of god that i believe will minister to you and really challenge you how many came expecting tonight i, I did i came expecting and we received the lord uh, from god uh, we do want to do a special prayer tonight and uh, it's with a heartbreak tonight uh, brother jesse gonzalez uh, his father passed away today and uh, his father, Vincent Gonzalez, that I've known for many years since I was uh, a teenager when I first came to the church. His dad was there, and uh, he was a leader there in the church in Huntington Park, and uh, he passed away today. And so I want to take some time today to pray for him, uh, pa uh, uh, Jesse Gonzalez and the family and all the loved ones there that uh, are devastated uh, by this loss. And we want to pray for him and just believe God for his mom and family, everyone that's involved. And so I really feel like we just need to take a moment here to pray for him and the family. So would you pray for me to, uh, with, with me tonight? So Father, we thank you tonight, Lord, that you're good, that no matter what's going on in our world and so many things are happening, Lord, today we are confident in the hope that we have in Christ because Christ is the source of our hope. And Lord, we know to you tonight, God, that you're gonna bring comfort and you're going to bring strength in the family tonight. We pray tonight, God, uh, uh, for Jesse Gonzalez. We pray for his mom tonight, Lord, that uh, you'll minister to her and all of the relatives and families that are connected, God, that you'll bring comfort and peace in that family today. And, Lord, we pray for your Holy Spirit to help them tonight. In Jesus' name, 
Amen. Come on, let's give God a, a honor tonight because we know that he's touching our brother tonight and his family. So we appreciate your prayer. Uh, we want to take a moment tonight. We're going to give to the Lord. And so I want to read a verse of scripture in Proverbs chapter 3, uh, verse 5 and 9. And if you, you're probably familiar with this verse of scripture, uh, it says, trust in the Lord with all your heart. How many know we need to trust in God? It says, do not depend on your own understanding. It said, don't depend on your under, un, own understanding. And then it jumps down to verse number eight or verse number nine. It said, and honor the Lord with your wealth and with the best part of everything that you produce. And it's really powerful that that scripture is right in lo line with trusting in God. There's something about trusting in God. And when we trust in God, how many know it takes uh, uh, an act of faith? It takes a step of faith to trust God, especially when it comes to our finances, when it comes to our resources. And even in today's time, we could say, man, how am I going to make it? How am I going to do it? How am I going to budget? But I tell you what, when you put God first, uh, he blesses your life tonight. And it's supernatural because it's a step, step of faith that we're giving our resources to God. And we're saying, man, somehow as I give to God, God's going to give back to me and God's going to meet my need. And so that's what trusting the Lord with all your heart and all your soul uh, and beyond our own understanding. And the Bible says, uh, honor the Lord. So this is what we're doing tonight as we were praising God. As we were worshiping the Lord, we're honoring God, but not only with our voices, but we honor God with our giving. I said we honor God with our giving, right? We want to give to God tonight, and we want to take a moment and worship God in our giving. And I, I want to just declare the blessing of God on you tonight. I'm going to pray for you in just a moment. But there's several ways you can give, as you can see on the screen here. If you're watching online, uh, you need to give as well. So here it is. Uh, our text to give, you can give online, or you can also use uh, the QR code on there and uh, uh, use any method that you want. If, if you're here tonight and you want to give cash, you can do that. You can also use an envelope or fill out a card, however you want to do or however you like to give. We appreciate your giving. Everything we do is possible because of your liberality. Is that all right? So I'm going to take a moment here to pray for you and pray for all those that are giving online. We appreciate that. So, Father in heaven, we thank you tonight. We thank you, God, for those tonight that are taking that step of faith, that give into your kingdom. I pray that you'll bless them. And, God, they'll see supernatural blessing in their lives tonight, in their family, in their resources, and everything that they do, in their jobs. And, God, I just speak the blessing of God in favor of God over them as we give tonight in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Let's stand together. Let's worship the Lord. appreciate all of you and your giving and uh, appreciate your generosity to the Lord. Aren't you glad we're open tonight? We're just open here to worship the Lord. And we made a determination we're going to stay open. The church of God is essential. Hallelujah. And no matter what happens, the church of God is very essential. And we need to be in the house of God worshiping. So we appreciate all of those that are here tonight, those that are watching online. And uh, again, I think it's like 120 screens tonight of people watching. So we're excited. And we're excited to have our guest tonight. What, what a wonderful friend he's been in my life and my wife's life. And uh, I'll tell you what, I'm just appreciate him anything we, anytime we can have him. So give Pastor Ron a big hand tonight. Well, thank you, Omar. And it's a mutual appreciation. 
Hallelujah. I can, I, I know a lot of, the, the problem is I'm online, so this always gets me in trouble. I know a lot of, a lot of pastors, a lot of churches. I've literally been to hundreds of churches, and you guys are one of my favorite. Amen. And I think uh, that this is such a powerful place. Amen. That, that there's a sound of heaven resonating out of this place that's touching Texas and Southern California. And, and then I see Diga back here in the back, and who even knows what Diga's doing? <laughs> Hallelujah. I mean, it's so, it's so revolutionary that I'm too old to even understand it. I just celebrate it with my friend. Hallelujah. Amen. And so we're still trying to change the world. Amen. And we do it kind of by this. And so I hope, how many need your life changed? I'm going to share some stuff, but but not just share. That. There are a couple things. I have started doing kind of a podcast. Right now, it's off of my Facebook, Ronald Simpkins. None of you know me as Ronald, but meet Ronald. Amen. <laughs> you all know me as Uncle Ron Ron. But you have to look up Ronald Simpkins, and there are these three-minute shots that are on there on discipleship, and uh, you might enjoy them. The other thing we have is outside, they do have some of my newest book, The Compass, and literally I think it could change your life. The first chapter alone is worth buying the book for. And, and it's connecting to who God says you are, not who the world says, not what your mama says, but who God says you are. Amen. And I think it can revolutionize your life, especially for something as cheap as 15 bucks. Hallelujah. And uh, part of that is just to help us, and we do need your help. Praise God. Amen. One of the ways that, the, that God keeps me going is just keeping me broke. And so I need help. <laughs> Hallelujah. And so, and, and that's a good thing. Amen. I, I better get off this. I'm on, heading down the wrong trail here right now. Praise God. I'm going to talk to you about what I call the five L's tonight. And uh, I was thinking today, is I was kind of working on some of these little podcast kind of things that, uh, you know, what you live for, how many know that that's going to determine everything? Was there anybody else in here that was like me? I, I at one point lived for instant gratification. <laughs> you know, there was a season of my life that all I wanted to do was feel good. Was anybody else like that? Which pretty much means you're going to be high or drunk most of the time. <laughs> and uh, there was a season of my life that I really was. And yet that's not a Christian. How many have you figured that out? That's not a Christian. I, I was in a class on counseling for uh, quite a while, and Larry Crabb, one of the best guys, I remember him telling about a guy that had come in and asked, he said, I want to feel good. I want to feel good right now. And Dr. Crabb looked at him, and he said, then I'd recommend a six-pack of beer and a prostitute. <laughs> and uh, the guy said, I said, I thought you were a Christian. He said, I am. I'm not telling you. I don't have, Christianity doesn't offer you an instant gratification. This is something that if you'll put in the long term, it'll change everything. You hear what I'm saying? And the greatest change of my life was when I quit living for the momentary and began to live for the eternal. And there are five L's that I want to share with you this, this evening. And uh, if you'll put these into practice, they'll change everything. And they're live, love, learn, lead, and leave a legacy. Amen. And they're just fundamental things, but if you become intentional to do these, everything will change for you. So let's think about them real quick this evening. Live. Say live. live. Amen. To live. Amen. Uh, there's a guy, playwright, Thornton Wilder, and he wrote a play about a girl named Emily. And in this play, high schools, when I was young, everywhere did them, and I probably still do. And uh, basically the story is this, that the, when she died... Uh, she, you were allowed to go back and live one day of your life again. And she picked her 12th birthday. Now, this is not biblical, guys. This is Thornton Wilder. <laughs> but it's not a bad illustration. Because she chose her 12th birthday, because that was kind of when she became a woman. Things were happening. But she's living this, and there's a play that's going on. And as she's going through these, this great moment of her life, she's getting really frustrated and angry because she realizes that she's not even connected to what's happening, that, she, that, that she's 
not paying attention, that she's not in the moment at all, that this is so important. And at the end of the play, she screams out, and it's the whole impact of the play, and she screams out, does anybody live life while they're alive? Isn't that a heavy thought? Does there anybody live life while they're alive? I think if Jesus Christ was here right now, he would ask, is anybody alive? Is there anybody living? You know, the Bible looks at people that are sinners and says they're dead. There's something that is so missing that God doesn't even count it as life. They're, they're just meat bags walking around. Amen. And they're, they're dead, dead in sin. Jesus said, I came to give life and what? Life more abundant. Amen. And it's kind of tragic, isn't it, that Christianity can be known as something that isn't always something that's giving life that can be legalistic, it can be kind of driven by other kinds of things. I was in a really tough time. Has anybody else had a tough time in life? Amen. If you figure out how to do this without ever having a tough time, you tell me. Amen. Then I'll call you a liar. But that's that's another sermon. Amen. <laughs> but Because we go through tough times, don't we? And I was with a counselor, and we were actually at lunch, and I'll never get his name was Ed. And Ed asked me, he said, Ron, what do you do for fun? And uh, it rocked me. I don't think anybody had ever asked me that question before at that time. And being a preacher, I'm quick on my feet. I'm half politician, I guess. And I knew what to do. I switched it. I said, Ed, what do you do for fun? And I'll never forget, he looked at me and he said, I love to get a good book, cup of coffee, sit on the Boulder Mall and, and just read the book. And I just really enjoy it. And I thought to myself, what a geek. <laughs> and, uh, and, and Ed was kind of a geek, I have to say, but... As I thought about it, I realized how much richer would my life be if I could just read a book and have a cup of coffee? And literally, it changed the course of my life. And I would challenge you that tomorrow, make sure you're alive. Amen. Make sure that you're connected. And this is life, John says, what? To know Christ. Make sure that you are taking some time to connect your life to this spectacular thing that we are a part of, that is birthed inside of us, that has to do with Jesus Christ. My wife, Susie, uh, we got married and uh, I'd bought her some par parakeets. They were actually canaries, Australian canaries. They were several hundred bucks. I think they were 400 bucks a pop. <laughs> hey, Amen, yeah, no, that's a lot for a little canary. And what was worse, was we, we were at our house and we hadn't been married very long and, and uh, this $5 cat gutted this $400 canary. <laughs> oh yeah, bad day. <laughs> and, but what, what, what even got my attention more is my wife, she's this wonderful lady, she's just a sweetheart, but she kept taking that poor canary, it would fall off the perch and it would fall on the bottom of the cage and then she'd go over, pick it up, put it back on the perch. And it would stand there wobbling, and then whop, it would be back down, and she'd go over and pick it up again. I'm thinking to myself, my God, I better never get sick. Amen. <laughs> this girl's tough, but I asked her afterwards why she did that. She said, Ron, if that canary lays on that cage all night, it'll be dead tomorrow. But if that canary can stay on that perch, that it'll just keep it alive and it'll probably be alive tomorrow. And then she told me the story of her son, Justin, that had been born premature. They, they told her that she shouldn't even ever go in and see him because it would just break her heart, amen, that she would connect with the child. But you'd have to know, Sue, she, she, ne she never gives up. And she sat for, I think it was three weeks, next to that incubator. And every few minutes, she would kind of push Justin Amen. And she'd say, remember to live. Remember to live. <laughs> and and a good, I talked to her today. Justin just gave his life to Christ. Amen. Here again. <laughs> but I think if Jesus was here, in fact, reach over to the person next to you and shove them a little and say, remember to live. Remember to live. So I think number one, we need to live. Number two, we need to love. Say love. We all know love is the most important thing in the world. In 1 Corinthians 13, it says all these things that we think are important, money and prophecy and miracles and stuff, and it says that it's just tinkling brass. 
compared to love. Jesus, when they asked him, what's the greatest law? What does he say? Matthew 22, uh, I think it is. He, he says, love God with all your heart, all your mind, all your soul. Amen. And love your neighbor as yourself. I think love is probably the most significant thing. And, and yet this is what's under attack. Part of why we just need to even be here. Amen. Is that we would connect with others. We'd touch. I was at Victor Dandridge's and his wife Venus came in and she had obviously had something happen that had kind of stirred her up and we asked what it was. And a little lady, 84 years old, had chewed her out. <laughs> and, and she had said, well, what have I done? And she says, I live alone. All my relatives have passed away. My friends have passed away. Nobody touches me all week. And said, the only time I ever get touched is when I come to church and you give me a hug and you haven't given me my hug today. Isn't that sad? Isn't that sad? Amen. And I think that if we're not very careful as Christians, we can think that all this thing is about is about money and, and miracles and, and working and, and these things that are, that are not insignificant. But I, I don't think that's what heaven's going to be. I, I think it's going to be it's going to be something that has to do with real love and care. And, and I know we have to be cautious today, and and and, and I get it. <laughs> Amen. If if you get COVID, you'll be okay. If I get it, I'm dead. Amen. That's the odds. No, that's, I probably shouldn't have said that. Omar, can you roll that one back? <laughs> Erase that part. But if I'm dead, I'm alive. Woo! Hallelujah. <laughs> and, that, and that's the other side that comes on it, too. And I'm in the middle of love. Hallelujah. Woo! I'm getting excited all of a sudden. Ready to keel over right now. There, there's nothing more important, I think, than love. And yet, once again, Christianity can be known for everything else except for what this is about. And this is what it should be about. Amen. I remember me and Howard were actually going to a conference. It was, I think, in Cucamonga at the time. And we were staying at my folks' house. who lived in San Bernardino to save some money. My dad, though, was battling with cancer. And as we came to the house, my dad had told us, told Howard, if you get up in the middle of the night, you'll probably run into me because I have trouble sleeping and I'll be wandering around. And sure enough, the next morning, Howard ran into my dad in the hall. And he said, Lloyd, are you having a rough time of it? And my dad told him, yeah, but that's not why I'm up. I'm up because they have a prayer meeting this morning, men's prayer meeting at the church. And uh, I, I'm going to that. And you have to know Howard. Howard was a tough guy. And Howard told my dad, you know, Lloyd, you don't have to go to prayer. Amen. You know, God loves you and you've got cancer. He said, no, I'm not going for me. I'm going because there's a young man that says that he just doesn't feel good if I'm not there to be with him. And I don't want to let, I don't want to let him down. <laughs> and Omar knew Howard almost as well as I did. And I went, that day we drove to the conference and he wept the whole way there. And he said, Ron, greatest sermon I've ever heard in my life was the one that your dad preached this morning. He said, when he was more concerned about not disappointing a young man than he was about his own cancer. That's a Christian. That's a Christian. And I think it's so important. I, one of my grandkids was born three months premature. That's bad. Three pounds. I eat burritos bigger than that. You know? <laughs> and, and, and I, I remember my son sent a picture and this little tiny thing is laying on his chest and he, he doesn't have a shirt on or anything. And I'm wondering what's going on. And probably most of you know what it is, but I'd never heard of it until this happened. They call it kangarooing. And if a child is premature, especially that far premature, if they don't have skin on skin, they don't have skin on skin, they're gonna grow up with emotional problems. They're never gonna be healthy psychologically. You have to hold it skin on skin. And I think that's the problem with so many Christians is they never have skin on skin. That, that they think that church is religion. They think it's just duty. They think it's obligation. And I think that tonight it's about fellowship. <laughs> Amen. I didn't come here to preach to you. I came to hang out with Omar and Letty. <laughs> and Diga. And Diga too. Woo. Hallelujah. Amen. Uh, to, to me, that's what it's about. That's what life is. Amen. 
And I want to tell you, we need to love. Say love. Amen, love. And so number three, uh, the third L, amen, is learn. Say learn. Learn. What a powerful thing it is. In fact, there may be some people that you're having trouble in your Christian life. And I'll tell you what I've found, that one of the biggest problems can be that you're not learning, that you don't think there's anything to learn. I want to tell you, God is so much bigger than we can understand, so much deeper. Amen. <clears throat> that, that we're fools. I've been listening to a book that's about creation and everything. And you know, we know nothing. <laughs> we think as humans, we know everything. But you know, you can go down to the Amazon, pick up a scoop up a handful of dirt, and there'll be five creatures that have never been identified in, in, by science. That there are billions of things that have never been identified. They're all tiny, but they're, but they're there. We've never seen outside of just a f couple of the planets. We've dug down almost nowhere under the earth. Oh, they show the books with it. They say this is it and this is the core, but nobody knows. They've never seen it. And I want to tell you, you know nothing about God. <laughs> can, can I get an amen? That's what some of you need. You need to realize you know nothing. You know nothing. It's time to let the Holy Spirit become the teacher. That's what the teach. I was a teacher before I became a preacher. And you know what the worst class was? The class that some of you probably were in. And you didn't want to go to school. <laughs> and those, I, there were some that I, you had to almost have a police officer there because they were, they were so angry. But you get a class where people love to learn. And that's what's here tonight. I feel it. How many of you love to learn? Amen. <laughs> Love to learn. Amen. And I'm going to tell you, God wants to take us places that we've never been before. We, th we think we know everything, but Mike Neville, who started uh, Praise Chapel, the fellowship, God, Mike was such an interesting character. He just, he loved to discover new things. I remember when he was going to get audited by the IRS and he was so excited, he was laughing. He said, I've never done this before, Ron. This is going to be so much fun. And I thought, I th only Mike Neville would think that would be fun, but he was going to learn something. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It, it, how many need to begin to take more time? Pray in the Holy Spirit. Let the Holy Spirit fill you. Get, buy a book <laughs> called The Compass. Woo! I think that was, that was God. Raise your hand if you'd say, I need, I need to... To do. In fact, who needs a challenge? Let's, let's do this. I think one of the greatest things you could do, who, who would say, I need a challenge in my spiritual walk? Raise your hand. You'd say, I need a challenge. The first altar call, quite a few of you. I challenge you, and if you really want to do this, you need to do it for two weeks. But if you'll do it for a week, it'll change you. Pray in tongues for at least 30 minutes a day for the next two weeks. How many would take that challenge? Anybody here take that challenge? And I, I'm joining it with you. It will change everything. <laughs> it may not be good, but it will be a change. Because I think sometimes when I pray in tongues, I don't know what I'm saying. God, I'm actually speaking mysteries, and I'm saying, God, kill me, kill me. <laughs> Amen. But I want to tell you, he'll only kill you if you need to be killed. <laughs> Hallelujah. But it'll stir things. It says that you build up your most holy. Jude said praying in the spirit. Amen. And it'll open you up to a whole nother dimension of what it is. So how many say, I'm, I'm going to take the challenge. I'm going to really attempt to do it. Let's pray right now, real quick. Father, we release a spirit of learning. We release a spirit, God, of connecting to the eternal. God, we open the doors of the supernatural into our minds and hearts, Lord, that you would begin to show us who we are and the price you paid for us to be the people that you have died on the cross and you suffered rejection. You didn't do that just so we could sit in church, but you did that, God, to open our spirits up to eternity. And God, we pray, teach us, and we'll learn. We pray it in Jesus' name, amen. And number four is lead, lead. Every Christian should be a leader. Amen. 
talks about studies shows thy self-approved workman need to not be ashamed. Amen. And there's that learning, but it's also in the leading. Study that you can, amen, begin to become the leader that God wants you, amen, to be. Everybody can lead something. Everybody can do something that can change the course of other people's life. Amen. Get, do you believe what I'm saying here tonight? Amen. You're not just supposed to be a spectator. Amen. It starts by following, but you follow Jesus in order to become equipped, amen, to make disciples and to change the world in some way that can happen. Everybody that I know that really has impacts, many of them started so simple, like Carl Friedrich's one of the greatest men in praise, chapel, been a part. He was a millionaire, <laughs> amen, when he got saved. And he, and he, he went to Alan Case's church, and he went up to Alan and said, what do you want me to do? Well, my God, if a millionaire asked me what I wanted him to do, <laughs> I wouldn't tell him to go clean the toilets. That's what Alan told Carl. But you know what, Carl, I've heard him tell a story. He just got a mop and started cleaning. And for months, he, would, he, he made sure those things were immaculate. And then they got the privilege of leading teenagers. And he began to lead the teenagers. And God's used him to change the world in so many ways. Amen. Because you've got to find your place of leadership. Amen. One of the most influential guys in Praise Chapel, Mancha, the guy that was running the overhead one day didn't show up. <laughs> and he never got it back again. <laughs> Amen. Or Manchaka, Manchaka, sorry that Bobby, and Bobby took it over and he did it until the day that he went out to pastor. Amen. There's something you can do. My dad is the greatest Christian I've ever known. And he should have been a drunk. My, the Simpkins, we only know him back to great grandpa Ben, who was just a gutter alcoholic. Yeah, you've heard the stories. <laughs> Amen. And, and, uh, and his dad, his son, my grandfather was just a drunk. And my dad at eight years old had to go to work in order to, he had to feed the family because my grandma and grandpa drank everything they got away. But at eight years old also, there was a Sunday school teacher at the Presbyterian Church. I don't know how many times my dad's told me this story, but God spoke to her to go across the tracks and pick up the kids of alcoholics. And she went and picked up my dad and my uncle and led him to the Lord. Amen, and it was, a, it was the beginning of a transformation. He never backslid. He led my grandparents to the Lord, my great-grandparents to the Lord. Yeah. Amen, because some little woman who never knew, you know, she never knew that she had changed my dad's life. She just did what was in front of her. Oh, man, can I get an amen? I think I've told the story, but I found out a few months, well, it's been, it's been a few years ago now, that my first church was in Payson, Arizona, and we, and we would have these wild Indian kids, <laughs> literally, that would come from the reservation. They didn't have indoor plumbing. They loved to take the toilet paper and put it into the toilet and then flush it, and the whole roll would suck down. We were spending more on toilet paper than we did on heat, I think, at one time. Amen. And honestly, I, I don't even know who they are because they were like 10, 12 years old. You know, you're the pastor. We, we, we talked to them. We helped them. And somebody came to me here not too long ago, and they said that they had just been to the inauguration of the president of the Apache Indian Reservations. And the guy had said when, they, when he gave his acceptance speech, and I want to thank my pastor, Ron Simpkins who led me to the Lord at 12. <laughs> I wouldn't know him if, if you're sitting here. Praise God. <laughs> wouldn't know who he is because we don't even have any idea what the impact of our life could be. Can, can I get an amen? Is anybody feeling the Holy? Wave at me if you're feeling the Holy Spirit a little bit here tonight. And that's what I'm just trying to help you with. I mean, these things literally if you will begin to be intentional, hallelujah, lead somebody to the Lord tomorrow. Amen. Go to work and be the person 
that tries to set a pattern that could change the course of some of those people's lives. Amen. You never know who you're affecting, and you never know un until eternity what, what begins to happen. Schwarzkopf did a thing in Denver, I remember, and guys paid like $1,000 to hear him talk about leadership, and he basically boiled it down to two things. He says, if you don't know what to do, do what's right. In fact, I think he said, do what your mama would say to do. So if you don't know what to do tomorrow, something, do what mama would tell you to do. Amen. But the second one is, I think, the most important. He said, if you don't know what to do and you get a chance to lead, lead. Isn't that intense? <laughs> I still don't know if I'm called to be a preacher. And some of you, the way you're looking at me, you're not sure either. <laughs> <laughs> I figured, I went to my pastor and I remember telling him, I said, uh, I, I don't know if I'm called or not called, which was illegal back in those days. <laughs> Amen, you had to know you were called. Amen, but I said, I don't know if I'm called or not, but if, if you want to send me, I'll go. And the next day we were in a car. <laughs> and we went to five cities. And guess what? The one city I said I wouldn't go to, guess where I went? Anybody want to guess? That city because there were some people there that wanted a pastor, amen. <laughs> and we just, we just did what others didn't want to do. Nobody else would write a book. I wrote books, amen. We did things that were crazy, amen. But if you give me a chance, <laughs> I'm, gonna try to, I'm gonna try to do it. Hallelujah. Isn't that great? Amen. Don't wait to be asked to do something. Volunteer to do something. Amen. Figure out. Become intentional. Broaden the scope of what you're doing. Amen. And the final thing is leave a legacy. Leave a legacy. Uh, they asked these old people. They were over 90. I think there were like 30 of them. They said what they wish they'd have done different. And they basically said three things. They wish they would have risked more. They wish they'd have done, they would have thought more. <laughs> you ever just been stupid? Wave at me if you've been stupid, where you just wish, man, I'd have thought about that before I did it. I could tell a thousand stories on that one. But the biggest thing was they said that they wished that they would have done more that would last forever. Isn't that a great thought? Stephen Covey, who wrote Seven Habits of Highly Effective People, maybe one of the most influential men of the last century, uh, he did a seminar and he basically charged $400 for this like 40 minute talk. And he's, he basically said this, what do you want people to say about you when you die? And then he said, here's the key. Think about what you want your family to say, what your friends would say, what the people at your church would say, the people you work with would say and begin to live your life so they'll say it. <laughs> oh, that's good preaching, isn't it? <laughs> Amen. And, and I challenge us as we go into this week, we're living lives that are just our seeds that are being planted. And things that we're saying and doing are, are just impacting people that we, we don't even understand. And sadly, sometimes it can be for bad, but hopefully it's for good. Amen and that we begin to become something that we have a testimony. You know, the Bible's a story, there's all kinds, Pilate had a testimony, but Paul had a testimony that we need to have, amen, and that, that can change, amen, the world, amen. To do that, you've gotta take up your cross, you have gotta do something, you have gotta move, you have gotta become intentional about some things that can plant some seeds that'll transform life, amen. And there's probably nothing <laughs> that can do more than what that is. A friend of mine, Brian Yeager, uh, he was going through a difficult time and he began to relieve stress by running until finally he had run so much that he decided to get into a marathon. And I'm not exactly sure. I think it's like 27 miles. Does anybody know what you run in a marathon? 17, 27, anyway, it's a long way. And he went to Salt Lake City to run this marathon. And he got there and he'd never run one before. So he had kind of 
didn't know how to pace himself real good, and you're there with all these hundreds of people that are running from all over the world. And uh, they ran this, so you'd run around and up these hills and down around Salt Lake City. In the last two miles, you'd come back into the city. And uh, not only that, you ran then along the main street, and they had a big parade going on <laughs> while these people are running in to the finish line. Well, Brian has got to this last two miles, and he's dead. <laughs> I mean, he's just barely moving. Amen. And, and he's, he's thinking about quitting, but he, he knows he can't quit. And then he notices that next to him is a marching band. And so they're marching along, you know, <laughs> you know playing their instruments, and, and they're passing Brian. <laughs> you know you're not doing good on your, on your run when a, when a marching band is leaving you in the dirt. <laughs> so Brian said he, he just dug down. As to his deepest place, he says, I'm going to at least beat this marching band. And he's just, you can just see him as he's moving. And then all of a sudden, the the, the leader of the marching band realizes they're falling behind the float in front of him. And he, tweet, tweet. And that means they double time. (laughs) And they left him in the dirt. But Brian made it to the finish. And he couldn't believe it, though. (laughs) Because when he got to the finish, this girl came up and put a silver medal around his neck. And he said, why are you giving me this? And he said, I'm, I'm like the last guy across the line. And she said, anybody that finishes a marathon is a winner. Isn't that a great thought? And I say that because I think Jesus tonight says, anybody that finishes the course, even if you're stumbling, you're a winner. Amen. And you have eternity ahead of you. Can I get an amen? Amen. Hallelujah. And it's all about, it's all about living your life for something bigger than just instant gratification. Oh, it's gratifying to be saved. I'm so glad I'm saved. I'm 72 years old. (laughs) You know, I I couldn't even imagine living in life today where it'd be be to be drunk or to get high, amen, and pick up on some sleazy broad at a bar. Thank God. I've got a wife that loves me. Amen. And because life is is too, too good, too good to throw away. Can I get an amen? Amen. So what have we said? Well, we said several things, but let's do this. Bow your head for a second here. Maybe some of these years come in that you're not saved, but you need to give your life to Christ, and you, you want to ask Christ in. Or maybe you're backslidden, you've drifted away from God, and you need to come back. You need to find life. You need, you need to live. Amen. You need to tap into eternity. Would you do this? If you're here and you're not saved or you need to rededicate your life, would you lift your hand? Would you put it up? Just looking around, it's kind of hard to see, but... You'd say, pray with me. I need to give my life to Christ or I need to come back. I see this hand over here on the right. Is there anyone else that would say that? Maybe you're online. I know there's quite a few of you that are watching online. You need to give your life to Christ. You need to rededicate your life. Just just join us right now. In fact, this one that has her hand up, would you pray this prayer with me? And anybody that wants to can pray along with me tonight but especially if you're online, it's just as simple. It's just inviting Christ in. So pray this, Father, I come to you in the name of Jesus Christ. I ask you to forgive me of my sin, my mistakes. I ask you to fill me with your Holy Spirit. Help me to begin to walk a new life and to live by a new power. I receive right now forgiveness and the empowering of the Holy Spirit, and I'm going to live for you. I'm going to be intentional. I'm going to live. I'm going to love. I'm going to lead. I'm going to learn, and I'm going to leave a legacy. Amen. While heads are still bowed, maybe there's someone in here or online. What we've been talking about tonight is just raising the level of the Holy Spirit in your life. 
That's what happens if you love a little more, if you lead, if you start to live for eternity. Is there anyone in this building you would say, I need to raise the level of the Holy Spirit in my life? You just raise your hand right now, put it up. Many hands, many honest hands. It's not even that you're doing bad. You just understand that it's time to run with horses. It's time to raise, amen, the bar. It's time to leave behind all of those things that have been holding us back and set aside the weight of sin that so easily besets us. Just pray with me right now, again, just in your own heart. Father, I receive the power of the Holy Spirit. Jesus died and left me with all the promises of the Word, but not just promises, but intimacy with Him and with the Holy Spirit. And right now, I receive, amen, the infilling and the empowering that can cause me to begin to put sin behind me and put life ahead of me. God, I surrender to your kingdom and to your power. Guide my footsteps. Give me a voice to speak at the time I live in. I pray it in Jesus' name, amen. Just begin to thank the Lord your own way. Why don't we all stand, amen, as we begin.